doing pretty good. So if you see me holding on to stuff like a gimp, it's because I kind of am a gimp. I got a gimpy hand at the moment. It's healing, it's doing better. I'll, uh, I'll have to share the rest of that story in a little bit, but we gotta get the pigs in the calf fed and I can explain what has happened recently over the last couple of days as we walk out here. Uh, so, since hurting my hand, I haven't been able to do a whole lot. My mom and dad came out and they actually helped us quite a bit. Yesterday, we got the pig's paddock set up and uh, that's been needing to get done because they've been running rough shot over the pasture. You know, we gave it a try and we tried a thing and it didn't work. All right, so the pigs have been tearing this up. We've got some rooting going on over here. This is new. This is their favorite new spot to root. And so we've got a, about a 12, 10 to 12 foot by six foot spot here that they, they've been, oh, and it goes out further. It goes out over here, so it's all over the place. And they're just gonna keep going throughout the pasture, rooting up our, our nice lush pasture wherever they please and in multiple spots. It's not like, oh, that's good enough. We'll keep rooting here. They're gonna keep moving on and rooting this up. So we can't have that. Uh, the other thing they're doing is they were taking baths in the cow's stock tank. So they were able to actually climb right in their muddy hooves and all. And they're getting their, uh, they're getting the calves water all muddy. So she's not drinking as much as she should. She doesn't have clean water. It is dirty when she's drinking it. We couldn't have that. So unfortunately I couldn't just turn around that day and fix the problems that I saw because of my hand. But my parents came out and they helped us get the pigs paddocks set up here. We give them a couple spots to spread out and eat in. Otherwise one pig will monopolize and bully everybody else at the one feeding spot and they won't all get enough feed. Ragnar wants to be right in there in the mix with him. Ragnar! Good boy! Another thing that we've been needing to do is get this mineral feeder uh, refilled and get uh, this out here for our calf because uh, she's not had minerals since we got her here and I don't know what she's had before that so free choice minerals for the calf and now she has free access to these as she needs them. She'll figure out what she's deficient in or what our pasture isn't giving her and she'll eat what she needs. And then she'll be a happy, healthy calf and you know, they only absorb about 30% of what they consume. So the other 70% or, or you know, give or take is gonna get pooped out on our pasture, which is going to, it's gonna remineralize our pasture with what it's missing. So that's the really great thing over time is we're actually reconstituting our pastures mineral diversity and density by putting these minerals out here. And the idea is with a lush diverse uh, plant biosystem and adding minerals to it, eventually our plants are gonna start bringing up the minerals that our animals need and they're gonna get a good mix of what they're um, currently probably deficient in. There's a lot of things that our area is deficient in, but this is 19 different minerals plus our salt, kelp, and a multi-mineral vitamin down here at the end. <clears throat> so, all good stuff. You got the, the manganese and the phosphorus and the alkaline and the uh, cobalt and everything, so. It's all in there. Um, there's also copper in here, and that's that's something that we provide for our sheep too. And uh, so far, 
Uh, our sheep have not been complete idiots and killed themselves by overdosing on copper. I know it's hard to believe that you know, you can give sheep copper and they won't kill themselves on it, but that's the difference between free choice and a mineral block that just has it in there. They'll overdose on copper if they have copper in their multi-mineral block. If you give it to them free choice, they're not gonna sit there and eat copper. And sheep do need copper in trace amounts. All right, well, we'll be back out here in a little bit to pick our cow's name. I'm pretty excited to see what we come up with. Uh, to see what you guys came up with and we just can't choose so we're actually going to be drawing from multiple names that were given to us as as options we're gonna be drawing from a hat to see which name she's gonna get so we've got a little bit of a surprise for you guys we do have a brand new animal on the farm it's an addition to uh, what we already have it's not a brand new type of animal we've got this animal on the farm uh, somebody reached out to us and asked if we'd be interested in purchasing one of their animals. That's kind of like one of our animals that we already have, and I'm being really silly about trying to be ambiguous and mysterious about this, but um, we're going to go meet her. But first I'm going to tell you what happened to my hand. So, these things are actually way more dangerous than I would have ever imagined. This is a tube water for the hatching time. Uh, quail cages, the rollout quail cages, and uh, I love the quail cages. I'm not in love with the waters. The waters do have problems, unfortunately, but we're trying to figure that out. So the problem that I've been running into with these waters is they'll end up with a leaky end or a leaky, a leaky nipple waterer here. So then I've got to either buy brand new ones or I've got to try to replace the gaskets in the end here. Um, so I just take the cap out, put gaskets on, put it back in, and sometimes it seals up, sometimes it doesn't. Now the other day I was out here working on this and I put brand new tubes in the water and then I tested it to see, is it all gonna hold water? And unfortunately the last tube that I put in there had a leak brand new tube water. So I took the end cap out, I put brand new gaskets on there, I pushed it back in as far as I could, and then I tested it to see if it would hold water. So I filled it up with water right here, the water ran down, it was probably about half full. Enough water pressure for sure to see if it would hold water, and it was just dripping water like crazy. Like crazy. And I decide a really quick, fast way to fix that is to grab the water like this. Notice where the water nipple or water nipple or notice where the water nipple is right there. Notice where my thumb is and the crook of my hand. And I go like this and smack it on the ground. Ouch. What happens then is my hand is wet. This is all wet, remember, because it was dripping water. And my hand slides down past the water nipple while gripping the tube. And I look down and I see a cut. I see a cut right there in the crook of my thumb, right there in the webbing between my thumb and my index finger and I realize there's a hole there. Well, I kept working until I realized it was way worse than I initially thought. And I can actually see the incision. It's an incision, even though it's um, complete, dull, blunt force trauma. <laughs> Those water nipples are not sharp. They're pretty dull. They don't really have a sharp edge on them. So what happened is that water nipple just tore right through my hand, right through my thumb there. And thankfully it only went skin deep, but it went all the way skin deep. And if you don't know, in the crook of your hand here, if you were to slice this open and you just go all the way through the skin, there's a hollow spot in there. It's like a little, a little 
hollow open area. And if you slice through that, you can actually see the muscle and the tendons and it's nasty. So I got a uh, x-ray view of what the inside of my hand looks like and saw the muscles working and stuff. It was actually kind of cool at the same time while I'm trying to not go into shock and think, oh my goodness, I can see my insides. Anyway, all that to say, I got, um, I got in the house and I took care of it, but uh, how I did that, I'll share with you in a little bit. All right, I'd like to introduce you to our new acquisition. Her name is Sasparilla, and she is a big girl. Come here, girl. Here, pick, 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 pick. Come here, Sasparilla. Sasparilla is a uh, purebred Idaho pasture pig. She is registered. There you go. She's just a little too big. So we're kind of putting her on a diet, but she's a very friendly girl. My goodness. You've got some beautiful shoulders. They just really, you're a really chunky girl, aren't you? I mean, it's, it's a lot of muscle too, but then back here, if I can get her to turn around, you can see she's a jelly roll as well. She got a lot of jelly. She is just about as old as our, uh, she's just about as old as Floki is. Over a year old. Coming up on uh, two years here soon. And she's still a gilt because she hasn't had a litter yet. She hasn't been bred. She may be bred right now, we're, we're not sure. Of course, with a pig this size, with this much weight on her, it's gonna be kinda hard to tell how big or how far along she's getting if she is pregnant. Sasparilla's owners reached out to me because we met when we first got our pigs, our breeders. Um, we There was a little bit of a mix up and we didn't quite get what we were paying for. So I talked to the, the breeder out in Wisconsin and she got us exactly what we wanted and then some. So she was really good to work with. But uh, I wasn't gonna drive all the way back out to Wisconsin to pick her up, so she had somebody that was coming our way with their own piglets, and they dropped our uh, they dropped our Helga off for us. In the meantime, they got her and they got a boar now. Unfortunately, I guess the boar passed away, but she looks like she's good and healthy. Just a little overweight. Well, a little more than a little overweight, but not anything that Putting her on a little diet won't do some good for her. But she's got a nice little wallow here, and she's got shade back in the, the lean-to or the, the goat shed. This used to be used for goats before we bought it, and um, we just feed her right out here. So we're getting her used to being on our farm before we let her go out to pasture with the other pigs. And uh, I think she'll definitely be able to hold her own if they try to push her around, they're going to be in for something else. And you should see her gallop when she wants to take off running. She can, she can move with some speed. She might look like she's unathletic, but I've seen her tear down to the other end of this paddock in record time. Just as fast as any of the rest of our pigs. She's got a really nice, a really nice nose here. Really short. Um, almost on the verge of being too short, but she'll match really well with our longer snouted boar who's got a snout that's almost too long. Hopefully between the two of them, we'll get some really nice boars. But Sarsaparilla will be a great addition to our farm and we'll get, uh, we'll get her bred up if she isn't already bred. If she's already bred, she should have a, a litter. She should fare out in probably about three months or so. One thing that a lot of times you might not think about with pastured pigs is uh, even though they're pastured and they may not root as much, you know, they haven't gone through and torn up our entire pasture by any means. Just more than I would have liked. So I want to confine them to one spot to do that. But even though they're pastured pigs, they still need a wallow, especially on these hot days that are reaching up to 90 degrees. Even an 80 degree day will kill a pig because they don't have a way to cool down. So we gotta provide them with a place to wallow 
place to get wet and muddy. That's how they stay cool. Pigs can't sweat and they shouldn't be panting. If you see your pig panting, that means they are getting overheated and you need to act swiftly. So yesterday and uh, just now today, I saw Bjorn here. He was really panting. So he needs to get cooled down. The others are doing all right. They're starting to breathe a little heavier, but they're, they're not quite panting like he was. So he's definitely overheated and hot. Time to get him in the mud and cool down. So I just started running this again. And while that's running, we'll walk down here and we've got a piglet. Created its own wallow right beneath the, uh, the drinking barrel. Hey there. Hey little girl. Yeah, you can stay there. <laughs> Yeah. You enjoying yourself? So well, I'd prefer that they not tear up the ground like this and mess up the water. The alternative is uh, potentially dead pigs. So I'll put up with it. They find a way to stay cool when they really need to, however they need to. And I guess at the end of the day, if we haven't made them a wallow soon enough, better that they do this than that they end up dying. Based on the names, the suggestions that we got, so what we did was, uh, we're overcomplicating this, but bear with us. We all picked our favorite names, the names that we really liked. Out of all the name suggestions that we got, there are 11 that we like, where we thought, you know, it's not a bad name, we could live with that. It's a cute cow name. So we're going to, uh, Take those 11 names, and we're gonna have each of the kids pick one name and then hold on to it. And then they're gonna let us know what they got. All right, are you ready? Without looking, Miss Delaney is first. Nope, just keep it. Take it out. Thane. Adassa. All right, those are the three possible names that we're whittling it down to. What do we got? Oh, I have two. You have two? So, Delilah. Everyone... Dawn. What did we rule out? Oh Rosie. no, it's Rosie. Rosie. Rosie? Yeah. There's two Rosies? Yeah. Is that Rosalina? Oh, okay. Well, oh. There were, tw there were 10 names then. Oh. We had a Rosie. And Rosalina. What's that one? Delilah. 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 Don. And Don. Okay. Now, fold them back up. Wait, that's all the ones that I chose. Rosie. Rosie Don. And, and Delilah. Delilah. Those I are chose all the ones Delilah. that I like. I chose Delilah. Yeah, we. All right. Now it's mommy's pick. Mommy herself is going to pick the winning name. Don. No! Why does that kind of do like Don? Is that it's like not too bad. she comes with the Don? <laughs> yep. All right. We have a winning name, folks. Don it's not any of the names that I was thinking <laughs> I would like. 
<laughs> but that's okay because I think she looks like a Don. So I'm happy with that. Sorry, name. So our calf's new name, our future milk cow's name is Don. It's a fitting name for our first calf. Perhaps uh, when she has a calf, we'll have to name it, uh, was it like Dusky or? Yeah, it's Dusky or Scott. Yeah, they're really Dusky, Dusky. Maybe we'll name her calf Dusk. So we'll have Dawn and Dusk. This is a natural fly spray that we came across by just searching for natural fly spray on YouTube. Um, it's pretty simple. I've been going through quite a bit. This is, uh, it was filled up to here. And this is after two days of using it. That's all I've got left, so. But it seems to be really good stuff. We spray it on her. The flies leave her alone for quite a while. They recommend putting it on her twice a day. We've just been doing it once a day. But it's given her some relief during the worst part of the day. So basically what it is, which I was surprised, we've got apple cider vinegar in there. We've got some dish soap. We've got some uh, vegetable oil. It's actually olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. And then we've got uh, lemongrass, tea tree, oil, uh, citronella. <clears throat> citronella, and we've got uh, cedar wood. And we also put some kunzia in there. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but whatever. Those three things, or those, uh, those five oils, we actually added kunzia because it wasn't called for, but that's what we added. And um, it's working great. So look up that recipe if you need something for your animals. This is great for not just cattle, but all the animals. We only use it for our uh, calf though. Uh, pigs know how to keep the flies off them. And uh, we've got something else for the dogs. So this has been a good thing for us to find and uh, it's been working out pretty good. Totally forgot to tell you what I did with my hands. So bonus content, I guess. Um, here is the, uh, here's the hydrocolloid bandage, if you can see that right there in the crick of my thumb. That's covering the wound. It was a clean slice all the way through. See the muscle and everything, all that. It was, it was pretty gross. So first thing I did was clean it out. Just washed it out with plain water. Then I soaked it in colloidal silver. If you don't know how to make colloidal silver, it's super simple. You get a machine, you get two silver rods, actual silver rods, yeah, they're made of silver. And you plug it in for three hours in distilled water and it makes colloidal silver for you. And when you drink the water or you, uh, you get it in your mouth at all, it has a really metallic taste. That's the silver in there. So I soaked this in colloidal silver for probably about three to five minutes just to kind of clean out any infection. Then uh, we dried it all off, and while I was holding it together, Mrs. Free Warden super glued it together for me, and then we just kind of smeared that around, make sure it wasn't gonna stick to anything else, although it did stick to the gauze. Then we put a hydrocolloid bandage on there, which you can see right there, and that has been keeping it nice and clean, dry, keeping all the dirt out, all the infection out, anything like that, bacteria or viruses, so that we can continue to work as best as I can with, you know, I kind of have to keep my thumb like this. And um, this is now the third day, or it's day three, or is it day four? I don't remember, but we're past the danger point of infection. We should have seen major infection today, if it was gonna start, okay? So we're past the danger point. 24 to 36 hours, you're gonna see swelling in it, and there was quite a bit of swelling yesterday. And then this morning, I woke up, the swelling had gone way down, the bandage was actually starting to detach. So I took the bandage off. It was a um, little oozy, which means the bandage had been absorbing as much of the ooze and the, uh, the blood as, as much as it could, and so what was being left over there was starting to smell. So I cleaned it, and then I, uh, put more colloidal silver on it and just made sure it was all good. I did touch it up with a little super glue because there was a, like some points where it seemed like it was starting to come apart or the super glue had just completely been absorbed by the bandage. So super glued it, put colloidal silver on it, bandaged it back up, got a new bandage on there now and it's doing great. I mean, the swelling is way, way down now. 
um, the first 24 to 36 hours, you do want to see swelling. If you don't see swelling, your body's not doing what it's supposed to do. So swelling is normal, but as you can see, like the thumb and the index finger, they were pretty swollen yesterday. They are good now. This is what they normally look like. So we're past the danger zone. We keep an eye on stuff like that here. I have medical training. Uh, I was a combat lifesaver in the army for a few years. And so kind of know what I'm doing. I'm not saying you should try this at home, but just know that it is your responsibility to always be prepared for any emergency that comes along. It's your responsibility. Don't rely on others to come in and save the day. You've got to be your own first responder. So that's what we do here. We're always ready for just about anything except for a major cat catastrophic you know, emergency that takes just simply more than one person to handle. But if we can handle it, we stitch ourselves back up, we, we clean ourselves up, we, uh, we put ourselves back together, and then we take the time off that we need to heal. We're healing up. Hopefully, hopefully we heal clean and everything, which so far we are. We're three, four days later, and it's looking good. It still hurts, but um, it's not inflamed, and it's not uh, spreading, so we're good. Anyway, I'll take care. Stay safe. Hug somebody. God bless you. Everything is going to be okay. Peace.